These buttons are a bit bugged. Let's try that again. I've obviously pressed these buttons a fair few times. There we go. So we can exit from that too. Okay. So can we uh, cut back to the computer? Okay, and um, it'd be nice to know where this ATM actually is as well. So we can retrieve the ATM settings, connects, retrieves the settings, and saves them to disk. Now, you can see, um, so up here are the passwords to the ATM itself. Um, I don't actually live on 123 Kiwi Street, by the way, <laughs> but I do live in San Jose. And then it has the uh, phone numbers as well as the IP addresses and the receipt coupons and all that type of thing. Now, um, of course, the, one of the greatest things about this is the fact that you can retrieve track data from people who insert cards. So would anyone like to volunteer? <laughs> is Brandon here? There he is. Brandon, I think, has a custom credit card especially for this. So can we flick to the ATM again, please? Can we cross to the ATM? OK, so just uh, insert your card as you normally would use an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. So back to the computer, please. So now, let's see if we can get the track data that he just inserted. Connects, retrieves the Stripe card data, saves it to disk. OK, so you can actually see from um, the first one was the Gimme the Loot, where I was actually had uh, my demo card. And then the next track data, this doesn't look like a credit card, Brandon. Dr. Raid of the Buster Cardi with the card leet, 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 leet. <laughs> but of course, uh, it will capture any credit card that's entered into the machine. And finally, um, the remote jackpot, which is always handy. So if you go back to the ATM. Issue the jackpot command. We have a winner. <laughs> now, before I, um, before, I'm not going to let the other one get off scot free. So I will quickly demo the walk-up style attack. Now, I'm not as fast as this as I should be, but I will try it anyway. So remember, the walk-up attack is simply popping open the cabinet, inserting a USB, and restarting it. So. Right, so that's the attack done. I, don't, I wouldn't be spotted if I was out by the restroom. <laughs> Um, I think just for, just to make it uh, look a little better on stage, I might just open the cabinet here. Not opening the safe, of course, just the cabinet. So the other attack was somewhat practical. This one, um, you'd probably end up on World's Dumbest Criminals, as you'll probably see soon. Okay, so it boots. Right now it should be reading the firmware off that USB drive. Uh, copies of firmware over <laughs> as it initializes the little black hat logo floating around the screen. 
Obviously, in the real world, it would be a rootkit, not a black hat logo. But so I kind of tailored this for both black hat and for Vegas, as you'll see. ARM9 processors are not the fastest. <laughs> I just want to see how long it actually takes to uh, dump its entire dispenser. It will start with million dollar bills and it's going to switch to IOActive currency which also doubles as invites for the party. So. I want there to be a big pile at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it still hasn't got to the IO active currency. I should have put that first, I guess. There we go. <laughs> okay, we can now uh, probably flick back to the uh, presentation now. <laughs> okay, so countermeasures. <laughs> Uh, the obvious physical, I may just disconnect the sound really quick. So the obvious physical countermeasure to prevent the walk-up attack is to offer upgrade options on the locks themselves. Uh, so there's a unique key for each ATM. Now, of course, if you want to take this into your own hands, uh, just drill a hole and throw a padlock on it. Um, if a trusted environment was set up that only allowed signed executables to be run, that would prevent the original attack. And although it wouldn't have pre prevented the actual attack vector of the remote attack, it would have added a barrier to uh, executing, executing rogue executables. Now, unfortunately, in Windows CE 5, implementing the trust environment isn't as straightforward as it should be. Code has to be introduced into the build, and I think the option to implement a secure environment should be a lot easier. But what you can do right now to prevent the remote attack is to disable RMS on the device. There's a high chance that you're not actually using the, um, the features, so disable it. That can be done from the operator menu. And finally, it's time to give these devices a rehaul. Uh, there hasn't been a secure development in, in methodology in from the get-go. There's a need to play catch-up, have the code audited, have penetration tests, 